the river Tiber for the Romans was a very important way to transport something from all over the empire up to the city of Rome but also um, uh, the, it was a uh, meaning uh, water for irrigation for farming so the river was a sacred river for the local people but very often the river Tiber uh, used to flood uh, the city of Rome overflowing and, um, and uh, the problem of the floods was definitely solved by the Italian king Victor Emmanuel II uh, the king of Italy in the late 1800s he ordered to protect the city of Rome with this work of embankment and high levees and walls all along the river so that nowadays the Tiber River doesn't come out or overflow flooding the city the island to the left uh, is still subject to the to the floods and see to the left side there is a hospital there which is uh, dating back to the mid 1500s we call it Father Bene Fratelli Hospital it's still functional though it's a very old building and has been updated quite a few times uh, we're Roma we people we can we can go there and take advantage and um, it happened to me in February this year I needed a little surgical operation to the veins of my leg I went in there and they gave me a room with an ocean view okay, with a river view and um, and uh, I didn't have to pay for the operation because here in Rome and in Italy we have social security system. Um, to the left uh, there is a, a church which is called Saint Bartholomew Church. And remember what I told you about Bartholomew, he's the saint who died skinned alive. Here to the right seems like they're protesting the union or for something. Uh, this is the Ministry of Health. So, something to do with the problem of health. And, um, oh, by the way, in the next days, so, you know, I will talk just about Rome in the next days. Uh, if you want to ask, uh, you know, to Millie or Millie herself will tell you about the way it works in Italy. But you got time. You got time. Okay, so let me stick to to the point here in Rome. In, in a short while, we will cross the river. We'll be driving all along the Circus Maximus, a place that was for chariot races, like in the movie Ben Hur, I told you. And there were in Rome more than one circus. The older one was uh, uh, at the Colosseum, the second oldest was at the Vatican, and there was a third one that was built later along the Appian Way outside the city walls. And not much uh, is left of that Circus Maximus. We'll, we'll get to see the area, the green grassy area, but the marble of seats have all gone, has all gone, taken out, pillaged by the local people. You have to understand that after the fall of the Roman Empire and throughout the whole Middle Ages, local people, they took advantage of reusing the marble. Most of the monuments of Rome, uh, famous ones too, they were completely abandoned to themselves and became in some cases like stone quarry. People could come, uh, with a carriage, with a horse to speak, the best marble. Go back home, reuse. Like home purpose, to make stairs for the house, top of an arch, columns of marble, whatever. And so, and once we go to the Colosseum, most of the marble is missing. It's no longer there, but still exciting. Um, listen, the name Colosseum is not the real name, it is just a nickname. The real name of the building was different, was Flavian, Roman Amphitheater. Roman because it was located in Rome, Amphitheater, that's the name of the building. Uh, Amphitheater, Flavian because that was the name of the dynasty with the Emperor Vespasian and Titus they belonged to. Flavian Roman Amphitheater, that was the real name. But 60 years after, about 60 years after the Colosseum was built, Emperor Hadrian, the great Hadrian, who built the wall in England, he moved a big statue of bronze, gilded, 24 karat gold, in front of the arena. And for the local people, it became immediately easier, quicker, faster to refer to the Colosseum as the arena by the Colossus, or one word, easier, the Colosseum. And so, it's still nicknamed the Colosseum, uh, easier than pronouncing the whole word Flavian Roman Amphitheater. 
um, the Colossus in bronze, 120 feet tall, 40 meters, is no longer there. It was melted like most of the other bronze things uh, from the ancient times. But now, ready with your camera, we'll ready soon to enjoy the view of Caesar's Palace up on the Palatine Hill, the Palatino. The Palatine Hill is the hill where Rome, according to legend, was created by King Romulus. And when Romulus, he had to decide what name to give to the city, he said, uh, um, the first letters of my name, they start like R-O-M, etc. Let's call it Rome Romulus. So maybe he comes from the root of his name. 753 BC, that's the year of the legendary foundation of Rome. But the archaeologists, they prove that even before 753, some uh, human beings, they were living on the seven hills. Um, so Rome is uh, for sure more older than 2,700 years now. Caesar's palace hmm? was the residence of a man called the emperor. Just the red brick ruins are left, but it was gorgeous with all the white marble inside and outside. They say that the Roman emperors, they turn the brick city of Rome into a marble city. And this is true. Unfortunately, the barbarians, and after the <laughs> barbarians attacked, they return into a brick city. To the left, in fact, you can see up the hill, the whole building was the residence for one man and his family people. Caesar Octavianagastus was the first to consider to live up on the hill to the left, and, um, and then all the others, they lived up there. To the right side, you can see across the fence, the beauty of the City Hall Rosa Gardens Garden. Uh, it's beautiful when the flowers are blooming up the hill and uh, you can count uh, there are 58 different types of uh, roses from all over the world. Uh, every year there is a contest. Last year the contest was won by um, a man, a gardener. He won with a type of rose, it's a little white one, which is called the American Rose. It's a beautiful one. And now to the left. Uh, um, we'll get to see better soon uh, the extension of the Circus Maximus for chariots. You have to be ready to leave uh, this bus uh, and then uh, we go straight to the Colosseum. Listen, before I mention two options, now I would like to give you three options. The people that don't feel like doing any walking at all now, they will cross the street with me and the group uh, and I will let you sit immediately in the shade. Then, well, after the tour is over, we'll pick you up at the same spot and by bus you come back to the hotel. This is the option that I added for people that don't want to walk at all. The second option is for people that don't want to walk the whole tour at the, at the archaeological area. You do just the Colosseum with me and then you take a seat in the shade. The third option is do the whole walk of the tour to the Colosseum and to the Forum. The Forum is an archaeological area that for sure we don't have to get to see the whole thing. Also because you're going to Pompeii, Pompeii, the Forum of Pompeii is much much better preserved with the original marble than is the Forum of Rome, which is still beautiful but it is mostly ruins. In it's gonna take about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, you know, to reach the Arch of Titus and come out. If you wanna do that part too, you know, you can follow. Otherwise, I will let you sit outside the Colosseum. So now, I'm the man of the many options, you know. <laughs> so you can decide to cross the street and take a seat immediately. You can decide to follow to the Colosseum, visit the Colosseum, and then take a seat in the shade. Or you can do the whole thing, Colosseum and the Arch of Titus. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, now be ready for this tour. We need the cameras, video cameras, radios, headsets. Um, and if you want to leave something on board, something you bought at the Vatican, you can leave it on board. The bus is going to be locked. Um, and how long will it last?